Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here with you. Um, try to do one video a week for you that is just a really bizarre one. First hay house I've ever had to diagnose after 22 years. What a pain. Um, video is January 2019. We, I think the place was wired in the 90s. They said two years old, no way. Um, one, the jacket's color of it. Number two, the Romex that was exposed. It looked like they had a remodel two years ago, but then they had, this is originally wired. Article 362 for ENT pipe, that's E, electrical, N, non-metallic tubing. Blue Smurf pipe by sling is what we would use on these kind of installations. Never Romex. Um, number one, the moisture. Number two, mice <laughs> inside the walls. Um, Here's the thing that you don't do even in the 90s, but they did do it. They slit all their jackets off. This is PVC. Well, look at my arcing right up in there. And so five out of six wires kept blowing on one circuit. And it doesn't matter. I kept touching different grounds and it kept shorting because this is not a plastic hub, of course but because they slit the jacket to get all these in, and that's why you can't slit your jackets on your Romex. And you can't have more than six foot of wire down a conduit to feed a panel. And some inspectors only let you nipple through the back period. But if you did do this and you cut it out, look how hard it is to find, because the ground goes everywhere. And you'll see inside they use plastic wire mold, metal wire mold, missing pieces. Um, I did not wire this. I had nothing to do with it other than to figure out why circuit six is popping and it kept exploding on me there. So we went through and we were able to take all the grounds off and then that didn't do it. So we took or the neutrals off and then we did all the grounds and we finally figured out it was a ground and then isolated that one that was popping the worst. And so we traced through. And then you can see the ground and the Romex, the wire mold. It's giving you a view. And that is going to be your issue. It had nothing to do with this circuit. But because of the fact the grounds are tied together in multiple locations, that surge melting in the GFI caused it to trip. All I know is I could hear it buzz like it was a conduit, but I couldn't find conduit until it came out here in the garden area. And up here I got boxes. And that's the conduit I heard buzzing, but that goes to the lighting circuit that made sense. So as you can see, as the grounds are tied from all different circuits, it causes that issue. So again, in Article 250, um, it's going to be under boxes. I don't know off the top of my head, but in the 122 chapter and later, it talks about grounding items together, injunction boxes, auxiliary boxes, whatever. But in residential, if you have piping, I really think that they need to keep all ground separated and insulated in a residential situation, especially with Romex. For instance, you get into a four gang box and you got maybe circuit two going that way and a four way and circuit. 25 going on a three-way and then a single pole going on a circuit 14. The code says you bond all those grounds together and wrap them. I disagree with that totally, especially with arc faults, because if they're touching, it makes it so much harder to pull things apart and isolate which circuits were having an issue. So when I wire, I practice not to do that as much as possible, especially if I have a four gang or a five gang with a bunch of different circuits that are switch legs as well, because then I got all the can lights and the light fixtures and 22 foot ceilings up high. So again, your inspector might look at that and make sure your stuff is grounded. Usually pull a couple things out and don't even push it back in for you before they plaster. But keep that in mind um, that when you're tracing uh, that ground, once it picks up that fault will go back on another circuit. And that's exactly what was happening. We've been here about it.